all right how's it going guys hope you're all doing well so welcome to a new video in this let's make series so this is the first episode of how to make filtered disco house yes yeah, so this was heavily requested like in the comment section like people are wanting me to do this video next so i'm happy to do it so we're going to be using filtered disco house volume one and we're also going to be using new disco volume one to get this sort of like filtered disco loop started what we're going to do we're going to record our own authentic disco loop start at like 112 bpm and then we're going to sample it and kind of manipulate and turn it into like a sort of filtered jack and disco house type record yeah so that's the plan i'm going to leave all the loops and samples available on patreon and on my website and um, but yeah let's just get started so what we're going to do we're going to go into filter disco house first and we're going to get a disco drum like a live sound and disco drum right okay so we've got live drums so we're going to go through this folder we're going to audition our favorite drum loop and uh yeah that's what we're going to use right okay so yeah live drums so let's go through them yeah really like that one that's probably the one we'll use right but we'll keep going yeah it's a nice one that one's nice okay we'll drag that in so we've got two there I did like the first one, so. Yeah, I like both, but let's go for the first one. Right, okay, we've got our drum beat there. We're just gonna leave that as is. So what I normally do when I get an idea started like this, I'll, I'll lay like a piano down first. So we're gonna do that now. What I've got is uh, this mini grand. Like you can use any grand piano, it doesn't matter. I know Ableton has one stock and uh, Logic does as well. I'm just gonna use this one just cause like I like the sound of it. I've got it on Bright Rock. It's by Air, it's called Mini Grand. I'll give it a play. <laughs> Yeah, so I laid like a rough idea down, like kind of prepping for this video. So I've got some chords in mind here. I'm going to show you them now for like any keyboard players. And then uh, yeah, we'll go into the MIDI and we'll talk about the MIDI. Okay, so the first chord is a C minor 7. That's left hand C. So on the right hand, we've got G. B flat or A sharp. C an E flat or D sharp. I wish this chord have actually like played sharps instead of flats because that's that's how I name them. But um, yeah, that's it. We're also doubling up this C on the left hand to give it like a deeper sound. Right, so that's the first chord. So the second chord, we're playing an A flat. I'm also doubling the left hand. Yeah, so A flat, left, then we have A flat, C, and E flat. Right, so I'll play the two chords together. Nice. We then play an F minor, with the left doubled up. Right, left hand is F. Right hand F, A flat, D, and E flat, doubled up here on the left. Right, so I'm going to play them three chords together. In the last chord, we're going to play a G minor 7. So left hand G, right hand G, B flat, D, and F. We're going to play an inversion of this chord throughout where this F is also here. We play it there. And we play it there. Right, 
So we're going to look into the MIDI now. Now you will take a look at all this. Yeah, I'm going to play this now so you can kind of see what's going on. Yeah, so this G here, this first chord. This is the inversion the second time it plays, just to kind of keep it different. Yeah, but everything's going to be included in this pack, including the MIDI. So this is all available for you to look at. Okay, so this piano sounded nice. We'll do a little bit of processing to it. Like we're turning this into a loop, so we don't need to go crazy here. But uh, yeah, we'll just like make it a little bit brighter sound. What we can do straight away is go into the EQ and filters, EQ8, instruments. Let's go to the piano EQ. We'll get this on. Just pushing some low to mids and then raising the highs a bit. So we'll give that a try. Cool. So I've tweaked it a little bit there. And what we'll do, we'll click on Saturator and we'll go to Warm Up Highs. So we'll give this a try. And we're just going to mess around with the drive here and the dry wet. So we're just trying to bring this out a little bit more. It's giving it more volume as well, but it's got a little bit more grit to it now, and it's a yeah, it's kind of like got a bit more presence. Right, so we'll try this with the drum then. Yeah, I've got this limiter on the air, the master channel. It's just called Punchy Dance Master. It's in like Ableton, Ableton stock. So if you just type in Punchy Dance Master, and I've just thrown that on the master channel, just to give it some more volume. It'll get turned off when we bounce the loop out, but um, I'll turn it off and on. <laughs> And I haven't touched it, I've just left it as it is, just yeah, just to give you some more volume. Yeah, so what I did next was a record a bass. Now I recorded a live bass. I'll kind of play it along. I've got it pre-recorded. I've also got the MIDI as well. And uh, we've got like a sort of funk guitar VST I want to show you. Um, I've just got this through my ambi. Hopefully you can hear this all right. I mean, having a live bass does have its advantages, but you really don't need like a live guitar. But obviously, you get the more authentic sound. Like, obviously, we've used a live bass. So, I've recorded it. But what I'll do first is show you the MIDI. Yes, yeah, so we're going to go into my new disco sample pack, which is available on my website. I'll leave links below. We've got like a funk bass guitar live music rack. So, we're going to get it now. Right. So, here we go, new disco, Ableton live music racks. And it's just got a funk bass guitar. As you can see, we've got a whole host of like instruments here. Okay, and we'll go up to here, bass MIDI. So this is what I like recorded before, which is basically what I just played on the guitar there. But obviously you can see the notes better now. Okay, so here's the MIDI, guys. So it starts in C. We've got the octave. We've got a walk down from A sharp to G. Drop to G, drop to F, back up to G. And then we end on C. We do octaves. And then we've got this A sharp till I kind of conclude the loop. But anyway, here it is. <laughs> So we can put this all the way across and we'll play this along with the piano now. Okay, so here's the loop here. It's obviously just what I've shown you on the MIDI there, but it was uh, recorded through the bass guitar. So I'll play this on its own and I'll play it with everything else. There you go, that's it. So what we can do 
straight away is get like this sounding a little bit more like it's coming out of an amp so we've got this cabinet and we've got amp here we'll get this cabinet first and let's get this 4x10 base cabinet i'm going to put this on we're just going to mess around with it and we're just going to see what it sounds like and we can tweak the uh, the dry wet the taste so we don't need all of the signal here Right, so we're clicking on the amp setting here, and we're going to go to clean. We'll throw this in here. We'll change this to bass. And we'll mess around with the dry wet again and just see like what it does to the sound. Okay, so maybe 50-50. Well, let me try that with the piano now, and I'll turn it down a bit. Yeah, so as I'm here in this drum loop, I think we can add a drum bus to it. So we're going to throw that on the entire drum loop. Yeah, so we want to make this loop like at the forefront, like with the music instruments. So yeah, we're going to turn this off and on and we'll listen to what it's doing. So it's off now. Turn it on. Straight away. That's nice. That's really made the difference there. So we'll try it again with uh, like the music. It just sounds lost in the mix there. This really brings it to the front. And again, you don't need all the signal. You can tweak the taste here. So you've got your dry wet zero or hundred there. So I think it sounds alright at a hundred though. Let's try an EQ on this uh, bass loop as well. So um, EQ here, instruments, electric bass vintage. We'll try that. Electric bass modern. Try this one. Kind of like the modern one. So, okay, we'll run with that. Cut it 35. Maybe I'll cut it at 50. I'm going to get this sitting with the drum loop a little bit better. I think we'll plan this uh, piano loop quite like hard left. You kind of hear it on all disco records, like like things are panned hard left and right, especially like guitars and pianos and stuff. So um, yeah, that's what we're doing there. Right, that's cool. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go into the filtered house folder. Yeah, I recorded a whole bunch of guitars, did a whole bunch of takes, as you can see, loads and loads of them, and they're all keyed up. So when I'm doing these filtered house sort of loops, um, I, like I tend to like go to these all the time. So we're in the key of C. Like I've went through these to save time and like I know which loop I'm going to pick. But yeah, these are all available. So whatever key you're in, just try these, maybe pitch them up and down uh, and just see what you can get out with them. But I'll give you a quick example. Nice bit of variation and they've all got loads of variation in them. So yeah, they recorded at 80 BPM. They're all recorded the same day. So you can like, you can kind of piece these together. It was the same session, so like they all sound like seamless. Like you could just blend them and uh, make it sound like an actual guitar player's doing it. I'll give you more examples. Like I could have cut that into five different loops and like did it separate, but. I, want, I wanted to give you variation with this. So we'll keep going, like I say, F minus seven. 
lots of single hits there. And like the last filtered house like uh, sort of video I did, I used like a whole bunch of these and like made my own riff. But I think I think with this one, the one I picked, we're just going to use one loop. Like right? there's so much variation in that loop, it just seems to work. So more single hits there. So which one is it? I think like as you can see, we've just got a whole a whole bunch of them there. I think it's this one. It's not that one, is it this? That's the one there. So we're going to use this loop. So yeah, it was recorded at 80 BPM. We're at 112. So it's going to play faster than like it was recorded. We're going to speed it up even further though. Like when it comes to sampling it. We'll take a listen to it. definitely got a disco sound to it so we'll get this across with the piano I mean essentially this could be enough but we're going to add some more stuff here well first we'll do some eq on this guitar so uh, yeah we'll just go into the ableton presets again and we'll get the funky electric guitar just throw that on we'll just leave that as is i'll get another one just to like sort of tame these highs just a little bit Okay, we'll go to amp, see if we can get anything on this guitar here. So, rhythm funk, let's give that a try. So it's really taking a lot of the lower, but we can maybe add just a bit of it. So, we'll like take this dry wet off. So, just like a little bit there, just get again, just giving it that extra something. I think that should be all right for now. So, we'll go back over and look at all this. So, yeah, we're going to bump this 30 right. So, we're going to pan it 30 right. This is 30 left. So, we'll play these both together now. You should be able to hear if you like, especially if you're listening on headphones, you should hear you like this sort of pan left and right here. VST that I always use uh, for strings. I've talked about it loads of times now. It's by Spitfire Audio. It's called Epic Strings. And like Spitfire Audio do like I think the best strings like on the market. This is only thirty pound. Like they have much more expensive ones. But I, I just I just picked this one because I could afford it. But I like I love it. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna click on the presets here. We're gonna go to we've got a long octave. Yeah. So I just like played some stuff in the C scale, just like sort of seeing what works. Maybe go up an octave. Yeah, so like on most keyboards, you've got your modulation wheel, so you can like move it up and down, and you can get like like give your strings more expression. You can kind of do it with volume as well. So I'll press the chord in and then move the wheel up. Okay, so that's the VST I use. I'm going to get the MIDI now. I'm going to show you what I played. And then, uh, yeah, we're going to automate some sort of, like, dynamics into it. Make it sound more human. Okay, so this is the string notes, guys. So, it's, again, we're just keeping it basic. Just something that's sort of grooving over, like, the track we've got. So, yeah, we're starting C. Goes to D sharp. To C, we drop to A sharp. We have these little sort of movements. 
happens again, D Shabba, then we've got a fill at the end. I've got these closed off here. I'm going to put these back on. It's the same as this. It's just an octave lower. But I'll play this part first. So we have the lower octaves. They're not as much velocity. So you can see they're only on 60 velocity there. The top ones are on 80. So I'll play it again. We've got the bottom octave now. I'll do that, but I'm going to play this along with the piano and the guitars and the bass, just so you can hear like the string working. Now this definitely gives it like a disco sound now. So we'll start with the strings and then we'll work our way up. This modulation where we'll be doing this so i'm gonna this might take a couple of takes but uh, we'll give it a go okay we'll give that a play Okay, it's cool. I need to sort the notes out, some of them out there. I'm pressing Control and U just to snap everything straight. It'll be a bit better now. Oh, I can see a fuse out there, but all right, easy fix. Okay, so that's not bad. Uh, like I say, um, I'd take a little bit more time on getting that part right. Um, like Just for the sake of this video, though, this will do. That's cool. So we'll drop the velocity on them like we did on like the example I've shown you. It's swelling in nicer there. Um, yeah, so we can turn it down though. We don't need it that loud. So we'll try that along with this. Yes, I think one more little thing we can do, uh, we can add like a little touch. We've got like these disco bells in the new disco pack. Um, so we're going to go into that and we're just going to, yeah, we're going to add like a little touch. So where is it? Yeah, disco bell live rack. We'll just throw this in. All right, so I'll play a couple of notes. Yes, I think we're going to do this. So all I'm playing is the A sharp and then C. Yeah, when it comes to chopping this loop up, this like disco bell will probably give a cool effect, so. probably repeat that more that works doesn't it actually like how i've played that if the midi looks good without me having to move it i'll just leave it as is yeah and i'll leave the piano on the bass on just so i can hear this sort of disco bell like a little bit better nice like it
Well, there you go. There's enough elements for us to like bounce this out and turn it into a disco loop. I think the only thing I'd change is this uh, like epic string, like the sort of modulation thing. I would normally do a couple of takes. I may even do that off camera, like before we go into the second stage. All right, guys. So it's the next day. So yeah, I'm listening to this with fresh ears. Um, I took some notes last night. Um, so we're going to just tackle these. Now, there's only three of them. Uh, very simple stuff as well. I did make a change to the string. I did do that modulation thing with the wheel. Um, again, I said I might take a couple more goes. I did. Um, yeah, it's just until I got it right. Yeah, but apart from that, nothing else has changed. But yeah, let's go for these notes. There's no point messing around. So uh, yeah, basically, I've put chop guitar loop for extra variation. So I think I know what I'm going to do this. Um, I'm going to show you what I mean. I'll solo the guitar. I just think we can like chop some things up and make it sound less repetitive. Yes, yeah, so we're going to give that a try. So let's play this now. I'm going to drag this down into its own channel. Yeah, so these loops are non-destructive, which means you can just do that and make the loop back up. So we've got this bit here. We're just going to piece in where I think it's going to go. All right, so I'm going to play from the beginning. There. Yeah, I think I'm going to delete that and put this just in its place. It looks like we've got a bit of a sort of like, you can see some of the transient, but we can just do that. Right, so I've doubled that up. I'm gonna play that now. So yeah, we'll listen now for these bits here. Yeah, I like it. Okay, cool. So I'm happy with that guitar loop then. I think it's going to sound better when we like loop all this up as well. Okay, so we've pieced that together there. So yeah, that's good. Right, what have we got next? So we can delete that. Okay, add compression to music group. Use vinyl, plug it on music group. Okay, this is easy to do. So we're going to group this up. I've got a group tracks. There we go. So I've got a dynamics. Let's just get a glue compressor and we'll give this a play. Right, and let's not mess around. We'll get this vinyl VST as well. So what this is going to do, I've, uh, I've showed it before. It's a free VST from Isotope. So I'll leave a link below. And it just gives you like your track an old sound, like a lo-fi kind of sound. Okay, so as you can hear, it's making noise already. We'll turn that down. But it's adding dust. So as you can see there, we've got dust. So we'll turn that down as well. We have a warp feature as well, which I've shown before. It gives like a wobble sort of thing. Uh, like We're going to turn it off. We're going to use this wear knob because this is going to make it sound worn down and then we can pick our year as well so obviously we'll pick 70s but I, i'll play i'll play the music just so you can hear what it's doing and i'll click through the different years like 1930s quality There you go, so this is what it does, it's really good. So we're trying to make a disco loop, so we're gonna go for 1970s quality. Yeah, and we're just gonna tweak this uh, wear knob to taste. I'll go extreme, just so you can hear what it does. But yeah, it just gives it an older sound. So uh, yeah, we'll give it a play now. There you go. Okay, so I've gone for 25% there. I think that's all right. I think we can leave that and bounce it out. But yeah, I highly recommend this and it's free to download as well. So yeah, I'll leave a link for it. Right, so we've got our disco idea now. So what we're going to do is put this into its own audio file. So what we need to do, so I'm going to go into master, turn this air limiter off. Right, so we've got our own audio channel here. So we're going to click up at the top and go to resampling. And this is already on master. So if you hit record, it's going to record what's on the master. Right. 
right so here it is guys this is our disco loop so what we're going to do we'll go into a new project so we can really start messing around with this now and like taking it to another place so um that's what we're going to do next okay guys so we're in the next project now so we've got our disco loop so we're going to do a little bit of processing mess around with it a bit and um, we're going to knock like a sort of basic house beat up get it like a sub bass going okay so we're still at 112 bpm but uh yeah we're going to speed it up to 125 but let's just give it a play first <laughs> Yeah, cool, right, so let's just do that now then. So, we're going to make this sound more like a sample. So, let's go 126 BPM. We'll get it nice and pumping. So, let's hear this sped up now. Cool, really like it. So, we'll go one step further. Let's pitch this as well. So we're in C. Yeah, we know we're in C because we like played this loop. So we know the first chord was C minor. So if we pitch this up two semitones, I'll put it on complex there. Now we're in the key of D. We're playing D minor seven as our first sort of chord. So now we're going to sound even more like a sample now. So let's play this again. Now this is in the key of D. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to add a little bit more drive to this. So what we can do is add a drum bus onto this actual stem. Okay, so this is going to fatten everything here. Okay, so we'll give it a try. I'll turn it down on here. And we'll turn it off and on. So it's on. Right, so another thing we can do is get an EQ and get rid of like some of the mud. Like if I was doing this with an old disco sample, you'd want to like lose a little bit of the like the sort of muddy frequencies and boost the highs. Yeah, so it's easy enough to do. So I'm just going to click this band two. Like I haven't even moved it. I'm just going to put minus three dB, which is going to take a little bit of the frequencies out here. I'm just going to click on band four and just put plus three dB. So I'm just pressing three, press return, and there we go. So it's just like boosted the frequencies here and taking them out here. So I'll turn this off and on. I'll put it before the drum bus. Yeah, so it's on now and I'll turn it off. Yeah, so it's subtle, but yeah, it's making a difference. Right, and one last thing we can put on this is the filter. Yeah, so this is what's going to give it that filtered sort of jack and sound. So we'll play this one more time. Yeah, really like it. One thing we need to do actually is take the bass out of this loop. So we're going to get another EQ. And we're just going to roll off the low end. Uh, like, we're still going to hear the bass that's in it, like the one we recorded. But, like, it's going to be, like, sort of just the high-end stuff. And that's going to kind of tell us what, like, the sub-bass is going to be. So we're going to take a listen now. <laughs> so we're 200 hertz there. I think that's okay. we maybe go 150. Okay, yeah, so 200 hertz. So now when we move the filter. And like obviously another thing we're going to do is chop this loop up and get creative with it. But first we'll make like a basic house beat. So we're just going to go to the filter disco house pack. And we can quickly do this. House kicks. Alright, that's cool. So we'll try kick seven. I think we can shorten this kick quite a lot. Yeah. So lose that. 
I'll actually delete that as well. I'm going to start like a big fade here. So like that. All right, so let's hear this kick. Yeah, but I'll definitely get an EQ and just cut some of the, uh, like the low end. Like 40 hertz. Okay, back at the sample pack. And quickly do this. Okay, so we'll try a clap then. We'll go through these loops. Right, the top one was nice. Okay, bog standard EQ. Right, okay, so we're back in the sample pack. We'll go for hats. That's nice, we'll go for that. Right, so I like that one. We'll keep going through them though. Cool. And what was the other one? It was the open hat, wasn't it? Yeah, okay, let's just go for that open hat. That sounds cool. And a couple more things just to get this rolling. Shakers. That one's nice. Okay, we'll try that. Get a bit of side chain on it and some EQ. We'll listen to it on its own. Right, we'll quickly get a top loop. Cool, okay, get that in. Maybe just repeat that like that, keep it different. Okay, so let's try some percussion now. Not bad. Right, that's not too bad, so I'll uh, mute that for now. We'll keep going. Okay, that's cool. Okay. Okay, that's nice. Right, okay, four more left. Right, we've got four percussion loops there, so we're just going to audition them and uh, see which one we like the best. Right, so I prefer that one, so we'll try this one here. Not bad, maybe play both of them together. Right, so we've got this last one here, I'll turn that off. That's really nice, that one. So I think we're gonna use that 
Uh, we'll try these two then, just see if they work together. That's pretty good. We'll just try this as well, just uh, while we're here. Alright, cool, that sounds alright. That's so yeah, that it's definitely good enough to do this example anyway. Right, so I've grouped them up. We'll call this just drums. Yeah, we'll get a reverb. So there's one already on here. We'll turn this decay time down. To there maybe. Right, so I'll turn the reverb on, so we'll give it a try. Right, so we've got this loop again, so we're going to start messing around with it. But first, what we'll do, I'll actually just play this all the way through, the full loop, and we'll just filter it in and just see what it sounds like with our new house beat. So I'll leave it like sort of there, and like we'll hear how it sounded. Sounds really good, it needs a side chain though, so that's the last thing we need to add to this. So get the side chain, we can put it before the uh, auto filter. Yeah, we'll just have it like that. Okay, we'll do that again, so I'll just play it from here, and now we've got the side chain on it. Okay, not bad at all. So what I'll do is actually do a double of this. I'd probably have that in a breakdown. So like the main breakdown, you'd have this like playing in full. And then we'll come into like a chopped up section sort of part. So this is what we're going to do for the drop. Right, so it's time to chop this loop up. So we're going to get these interesting sort of sections and uh, see what works. So it's on loop. We know it's pitched up the D. So we can just click over here. And now it's just going to loop whatever our section is. Right, so I'll drag this down. So this is our loop now, but you're going to get the idea and we're going to start sounding more like a French house track now. So here we go. Yeah, so we'll just keep going across and see if we can find something else. There's a good one there. So we'll add the filter, see what that sounds like. And we'll try it with our beat. There's one good little section there. Right, let's keep going. There's an interesting one. Yes, yeah, so we're playing a kind of half and half loop. This is the end of one loop and the start of one loop here. But this is actually the end loop in this section. So it gives a weird effect sometimes. That's 100% a track idea there. So again with the drums. Yeah, loads and loads of options here. So I kind of heard something with that then, so if we do that, so we'll cut there, and maybe put that there. Right, so we've got two sections there, like two different cuts, so I'll give it a play, I'll play it on its own. Yeah. Right, 
case that's kind of cool that kind of works so we'll run with this idea and we definitely want to do shorter and longer chops as well so we'll try and do it so uh let me listen to this again <laughs> So this here, maybe, um, well actually we'll loop this section up and maybe extend this so it's not like this. We'll extend it like that so it's like a, like twice as long. So let's hear what this sounds like. That's cool, that's another track idea. Like I say, there's so many combinations here. We could actually try that right at the end because there's like a sort of string riff at the end. So that might work. Really nice, so that definitely works. So there you go, like just that original idea we made has created this and you never know what you're going to get because you're always going to make a different idea so you never know what's going to be inside these loops when you come to like sort of mess around with them let's add a little bit more variation though so i'll just play this on its own so straight away i'm thinking we can kind of cut this and copy that there and take that back so we've got like this start one so this here is on here now to give like a sort of double kind of sample sound. So I think we can do another little variation there. So let's see what we can find. We'll try something else. Fits. Okay, let's try that. So this is just the first half. Really nice. Okay, we'll play the whole thing. really like that i think that sort of double thing we can like we can live without it it doesn't really need it yeah i'm really happy with that so i'm gonna wear sort of make this one block We've got our original one there, and as you can hear, like we can still hear the bass in this loop, which is kind of telling us what the sub bass needs to be. So we'll take a listen to it one last time, and I'm listening to, like to hear what the bass is. So it's pretty simple. I think I know what that is. Uh, yeah, so we're going to draw that with a sub bass. But let's play this all the way through with the drums. We'll actually put this part next. I like it, it sounds good. I would obviously like extend that, double it up. I mean, I'm not making a track like I say, I'm just making a little example for you, but maybe do that. Let's try some more variation of this sample just to like make it a little bit more interesting. So 
maybe do that. Maybe double that. And you do like a sort of bit like that and use the filter, so put it back here. Kind of like that. That's the idea for that. I'll try that from here then, just to hear that chop. Let's give that its own channel because I wouldn't have the side chain on at that point. You want like the whole, you want the actual original sort of sample. So play that from here. Yeah, like that. Right, so I think the last thing we're going to do now is just add a sub bass then. So we're going to try and replicate this disco sample. Okay, so we've got a bass sample here. We're going to use that for our sub bass. So we've got this MIDI here. We can use the same sections as the disco chop to figure out this bass line. So we're going to have a listen to it now. What we need to do is because we pitched this up like uh, two semitones, it's in D. We'll need to move the MIDI up to D. So if we highlight everything, we just moved it up twice there. So it's starting in D there. We'll try and figure it out here. So let's have a look here. So it was... Right, okay. So I'm going to try and figure this out. I think it was this actually second bit. So it's here. That's what it is. So that's just that little section there. So this is the first part of our bass line. It's just the same note. So we're on D there. So that just repeats. So this is how easy it is to figure out the bass line. Right, so we listen to this here. So was it that? I can't remember. Um... So honestly, I think that's what it was, and that octave on the end. So I'm sh so I think this is the bass line. I've just like I haven't even properly listened to it. So this is our new bass line. It's very simple, but it's driving and it's gonna work. Right, so we're gonna give it a play. <laughs> great so we're going to get a side chain on it now there we go so we'll just do that and uh do that that's about the same as the disco loop so we'll play these together again and i'll just get this across and i'll play everything together <laughs> got a chop there we can kind of try and match it so was it so what did i do here i can't remember um... so i think it's that duplicate that and then that again just so it's matching this bit at the top here Okay, great. What I'll actually do is play the drums and the beat and like like take the disco loop out so you can just hear this sub bass on its own. So this is our sub bass. <laughs> I 
really nice. So, okay, we're going to play this all together. We're going to wrap this video up. And if you enjoyed this video, I've actually got a full filtered house course, like a track from scratch thing, where it's like four, three or four videos, but we like to go from the first beat to the very end. So if you enjoyed this, maybe check that out. I'll leave a link for it below. All right, here we go. Thanks very much. Hope you took something from it. And I'll see you very, very soon for the next video. All right, take it easy, guys. Cheers.